Yeah, hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, probably short question where we have to talk about concerning value added tax. Um, sometimes there is a discussion, especially in Germany or so, when you work or do work on goods which belong to others. If what you do when you hand them back the finished or altered good which they gave you, uh, if that is a delivery or a service. And um, well, what do we have to talk about? First the problem, <laughs> then the idea behind the solution, then the German rules and um, the EU rules. And naturally, you know, we choose a systematic approach. So we begin at the beginning and talk about the problem first. So um, you remember probably I hope that uh, somewhere in the beginning of our lectures we talked about um, that you have a principle of uniformity or unity of transactions. So you can't split up or separate things which economically belong together if they happen between the same persons. And now it might be that the one or other transaction contains elements of a delivery and of a service. And then you have to decide at, as which you classify it, either a delivery or a service. One thing must be clear in advance. It can be either a delivery or a service, not both. So you have to make a decision. And this is important because naturally, if you don't know if it's a delivery or a service, then you don't know if the place of supply rules have to be taken from the rules on the place of supply of a delivery. So place of delivery or place of a service. And so everything depends on this uh, first decision here. Is it a delivery or a service? So the problem may arise if you, for example, have to produce a good on specific requests of a customer. For example, you are a sculptor. Um, so an artist who makes statues or so, and now you do one on special order of a customer then you have to perform your work activities following the customer's orders, probably the quality of your work is everything which matters. However, you have to hand over the finished good afterwards to the customer, that would be a delivery aspect. In this case, uh, the solution is probably simple, uh, comes in a minute. However, the question might also arise, and there it's a bit more difficult, if you have to work um, for example, if you have to do repairs on a good which already belongs to the customer. So he gives you a good, you change a bit on that good and hand it back. So did you deliver then something? So was it delivery or is it a service? And um, that's the question we have to solve here. First variant is probably easy. Our sculpture had to make a statue. So in the final moment of the whole transaction he hands over an object that object changes owner uh, that object is important and that's what the customer wanted so it's not an ancillary element so you transfer the position of an owner of a tangible object and that's nearly everything which counts here so you made a delivery clear and easy uh, number two second variant you get an object which does not belong to you, it belongs to the customer. You, let's say, repair some one or two things which are broken and then you hand the object back. Then it's clear that you didn't transfer ownership in that object to the customer because it was customer's object when he handed it over to you. Um, customer remained owner of the object all the time long, all, so all the time. And you handed it back, so no transfer of ownership concerning that object. However, it might be that during your repair work or other work which you undertook with regard to that object, you added some materials to the object. Uh, and then the case is, or the question is, well, um, as a consequence on the work which of the work which you did, the customer now also becomes owner of that stuff which you added to the customer's object. So when you hand it back, 
the finished repaired object, you transferred also ownership of some tangible stuff to the customer besides only doing work. And so here we have then a mixture of elements of a delivery. You transferred ownership in some materials and of service. You did some work for somebody else. And that is now creating the problem. At as which thing do you classify it? No. Now the basic idea behind the solution is easy. If you read the German definitions in paragraph 3.1 and 3.9, of the Umsatzsteuergesetz, then you see that a transaction is a delivery if somebody transferred ownership of a tangible good to the customer. And now, if you closely read that, then the definition does not say um, it's a delivery if you only transfer ownership of a good, but wherever in um, combination or connection with the transaction, you transfer ownership of a good to a customer, then that is classified as delivery. So if you read that and read between the lines and also, also or also among other elements, ownership is transferred, then you end up with the right solution. Because then our combination of transfer of ownership of some materials plus work would automatically fulfill the rule of 3.1. During the transaction, also ownership of a tangible goods, the materials which you added, uh, changed, was handed over to customers, so it is a delivery. A service classification is only possible if 3.1 is not fulfillable because um, 3.9 says a service is only um, every transaction which is not a delivery. So first delivery classification has to be tried. Um, and so a bit of materials transferred to the customer basically turns something under the German perspective into a delivery, even if there is work combined with that. So to give you an example, imagine your car is broken and during the repair the motor has to be exchanged. You hand the car over to the repair shop, uh, naturally it remains your car, you get it back later. So there, with regard to the car, we have no change of ownership at all. Um, then somebody working in the car repair shop works one day, two days, three days, Curses from morning to the evening, and um, you get afterwards back the car, which now again works. However, there is no a new motor built in, and the new motor was not your property before. It becomes your property now. So ownership of the motor changed. That's a tangible object, a good. And this makes the whole uniform transaction into a delivery on the 3 one. Um, to see the problem, just compare a variant. Your car is broken, the motor must be exchanged, the customer has already bought a new car motor, um, and he knocks on the door of car repair shop and um, says, here's my car, here's a new motor, please do the repair. In that case, what you get back, your car has been owned by you before, the motor inside the car has been owned by you before, so when you get the car back, you don't get any ownership in any tangible good during that transaction. Everything you get back was already owned by you before, so there is no room to classify the event as a delivery. So in that case, the transaction is a service under 3.9. Um, we might also think about having a painting restored and during the restoration somebody uh, cleans it but also a few dots of paints are added. Uh, evidently here you get ownership of a few dots of paint, however these will not be so important that they can count and um, so basically this is ancillary element. So um, only the work remains as something which has to be viewed upon. We are going to concentrate on this immediately afterwards. Yeah? Because that last example shows you 
Uh, evidently, you cannot apply the rule purely mechanically without any thinking. And by the way, you should always try to think. Um, so you should never follow a rule blindly, however, try to understand. And so you must keep in your mind what you learned in the basics. Um, when you have a transaction, there is main elements of the transaction, core elements which count, and there's something called ancillary elements. So the unimportant add-ons, which one only adds to make the main aim or reachable or to, to facilitate the fulfillment of what the customer really wants. You remember when you want a drink from an automatic vending machine, first there will be a cup popping out and um, then there will be coffee filled in the cup. You don't want the cup. The cup is just added to make that what you really want, to buy a drink possible or at least more convenient. And uh, ancillary elements, you remember there was a nice rule which said, well, you just ignore them. They are not what the customer wants. They are completely ignored. They don't count. Everything which is paid under which pretext whatsoever is automatically only paid for the main element. And ancillary elements just ignored. You cross them out, forget them completely. And now, naturally, that also impacts the decision between um, work done being a delivery or work done on an object being service. Um, because if that's something which changes owner is unimportant ancillary element, then it does not count, then it does not exist, then nothing changes owner. And so we have to do with the service. So example imagine you ask an expert for his opinion on a complex legal matter he gives you his expert opinion in form of a comprehensive statement of 400 pages nicely bound as a book um, by the way that's not an example of work on an object given um, to him by you however that's the basic same logic here you get the information plus a book so you get a tangible object however from the perspective of both parties involved, um, the book is an evidently only a nice add-on. You have a printed version of the expert's um, opinion. Delivering the expert opinion is all what counts. The print out the book does not really count. Um, it's just an ancillary element. It's not what the people primarily want. It's unimportant. The painter paints your room. He charges you with 2,000 euro for his work. Naturally, if he brought, brought and bought the paint himself, the paint, not the paint, the paint himself, which he usually does, then you also become owner of the paint when it's on the wall. However, uh, nobody cares about the paint, really. What you really want is that the um, painter does his work and the paint is usually regarded as unimportant. So nobody would care if, if you said buy the paint at Aldi's and he bought the paint at Lidl's or he bought it at Costco or wherever he wanted. Um, the only tangible object here in play, the paint, is evidently seen as unimportant by both of the parties. So an ancillary element does not count so everything which remains is the work. And so what the painter does on your walls is simply a service. Uh -huh. um, now the question naturally shows up, what is then an ancillary element and what counts? And um, you can't define that clearly. The view of the average customer will count. However, I personally prefer certain tests, for example, reclamation test. Um, imagine you go to a restaurant. There you eat some food and drink, and um, then there is also service and atmosphere. Now the question is, is service and atmosphere in a restaurant visit an ancillary element, or does it count? Um, 
Well, imagine you book an evening in a restaurant to pass your 25th anniversary of your marriage there. And when you arrive, um, the restaurant owner has shifted the seats which you wanted to have during where you agreed on from the nice, um, very artistic and impressing room, central room of the restaurant, uh, to something on the second floor where everything is dirty, dusty, uh, and dark. Um, would that be a valid reason to complain? Probably yes. Um, what if the waiters are impolite, harsh, uh, molest the guests? Would that be a reason to complain? Yes. So it's evidently not unimportant, this element. Um, probably if that goes really wrong, a judge would allow you not to pay at all. So let's now apply this nice idea to our examples. Imagine our expert, for example, delivers his opinion for a price of 500,000, 50,000 euro, 400 pages. Um, now the customer informs him that the printout or the book has been accidentally damaged and asks the expert if he can obtain another printout. Will the expert then change again, uh, charge again 50,000 euro for the new printout or will he hand it over for free? And um, let's guess, probably the expert just says, yeah, here you have another printout. Um, uh, naturally, that's a question of politeness. So evidently the printed item seems to be completely unimportant, just an unimportant add-on to make the, the thing which is actually really wanted, the transfer of the information, more convenient or even possible. Uh, but it's not what the object, um, so it doesn't count and so we only are left with the service. Uh, you might compare that with the situation where you go to a bookshop and then buy calls, calls, toys, war and peace. Um, naturally, why do you buy Tolstoy's War and Peace? You buy it because you want to read it, so you are interested primarily in the information. However, let's now think of something goes wrong. You take the book home, you have a very little child. The little child is highly interested in testing out how goods can be transformed so, um, and tears it all apart. Uh, and so now you don't have Tolstoy's War and Peace, but Tolstoy's War in many pieces. Uh, so desperately unhappy, you go back to the bookshop. The bookseller from yesterday still remembers you. You tell your bad luck. And he says, fortunately, I still have another item of the book in stock. Here it is. And now the question is, will you have to pay for the book again? Then evidently the printed version here plays a role. It's not completely unimportant. It's not an ancillary add-on. This object would then count. Or otherwise, if it's just an ancillary element, you would get that book for free again. Um, and I presume that every reasonable bookseller would probably charge you the book again. Um, so the book itself, the material element did matter here. So it was in the strict sense of the word, really material in the sense that it matters for this transaction. So when you buy a book, although you are perhaps only interested in reading it here, the object which is transferred counts. It's not only ancillary, it's the primary element. So it makes the whole thing a delivery. Um, that is also underlying the legal rule in Germany, which uh, draws a line for so-called Werklieferung, um, a special rule for work done on objects. Um, there, paragraph 3, 4 says, if an entrepreneur undertakes it to work on an object owned by the customer, then that work is qualified as a whole as a delivery. If the entrepreneur during the work adds materials to the object, 
And the only case where that rule does not apply is if the materials in question are only unimportant small elements. Unimportant. Yeah? So, um, you know, I like strange and probably awkward sentences to memorize things. So the only way when adding materials does not turn it into a delivery is if the materials are not material hmm, for the transaction. Um, that's simple and plain. So remember the, the expert who restored a painting and added some small dots of paint. Um, the only thing the customer was interested and both are interested is that after the restoration work, the painting is again beautiful as in its original state. Um, nobody cares about the used materials. They are completely unimportant. And um, that makes the whole thing not a delivery, but a service, because only the work is in the focus of the parties. Um, yeah. So, you should, however, know two important things. First, um, this rule in 3.4, whenever you solve a case or talk to somebody who is familiar with German law, you will cite 3.4 for work done on objects of others. Um, however, you should make yourself clear this is just a clarification of what already follows from the basic definition in paragraph 3.1. So basically the rule is superfluous, it's just a clarification to avoid um, misunderstandings. And you should also keep in mind, which uh, I did not fully understand uh, some years ago, that the term Werklieferung is nowadays only used for work done on objects which already belong to the customer. So if you um, if you create completely from nothing a statue for the customer as an artist or so, then we would not speak of a verkli form, but just of a usual standard delivery. Uh, that is, by the way, a bit confusing because under German civil law, a verkli vertrag, so a contract on work to be done, um, it can be used for the one and for the other uh, constellation. Um, the overarching element in both cases was that something was individually produced or done on the individual wishes of the customer so that you had to deliver a customized item. Well, um, in accordance to what we said just now, Work undertaken on an object which belongs to your customer is classified as a service in all those cases where you don't add any materials which are relevant, which are important for the transaction. Uh, that follows from the general definition in 3.9. There is a certain rule on cases where work undertaken on objects owned by others is classified as a service, and that even contains the specific term of Werkleistung in German. However, that's not a definition, that's only a clarification for a rare and strange constellation, a very specific case. Uh, and that you don't mix that up, I add a small explanation to what you can find in 3.10. But first, let's have a look on how that is really expressed in the legal text. So here you have it. If a customer gives to an entrepreneur material which the entrepreneur is meant to use for the fabrication of a good, and the entrepreneur gives back to him a good which is not produced from exactly that material, but from identical material of the same kind, then the transaction is nevertheless regarded not as a barter trade. You give me one object, you get back another similar object but it will be regarded as a service, a working contract regarded as service, if the remuneration for the activity of the entrepreneur is indeed determined in the way in which the remuneration for such a work, such a processing of a material into a finished product 
he is usually determined. And um, after having read this, you will be probably completely clueless. So let's talk about examples to illustrate what is meant here. So imagine you have a farmer and that farmer has some grain, let's say wheat, um, and wants to have that transformed into wheat flour. So um, he goes to a mill, knocks on the door, says, hey, owner of the mill, come down here, is a sack of wet, and please, I want to turn it into flour. And um, the owner of the mill takes the grain, does the milling, hands it back, and everybody is happy. In that case, it is absolutely clear what the farmer gets. Um, that is what he owned already previously, so no change of ownership. He's wet, he's handed over, and he gets it back in a processed form as wet floor. So everything he gets back was always his property, so no debate about this being a delivery. It's clear that was not work, that was only work uh, processing the wet into wet floor. However, now a variant which is more realistic. Uh, the farmer goes to the owner of the mill, hands him over a sack of his wood and says, hey, yeah, please turn it into floor and do, a milling, do the milling. And the owner of the mill hands him back a sack of wet floor. However, now you know owners of mills. Huh? Will he really care if the sack of wet floor which he hands back is that product which he produced from exactly the sack of wet which he got? Uh, the answer is you will not find that mill owner. So he gets just back a sack of wet floor which was made from exactly the same kind of wet, but nobody will guarantee that uh, the grains were not mixed up. So when the farmer gets back his wet, he now gets floor made from wet which did not belong him before. And he lost the property of his own wet, which was uh, probably handed over to somebody else. Um, now, was this then a kind of water trade? Uh, I give you my sack of wet, uh, you become owner of it. You give me back another uh, sack of processed wet. And the answer is that would be a bit far away from reality. So he, that's the background beyond paragraph 310, uh, in cases where you hand over a good where you say, please work on this or process this for me, and then you get it back. And what you get back is processed from exactly the same kind of stuff, although nobody can guarantee that it's absolutely the identical thing which you hand it over. Um, then that doesn't bother anybody. It is treated as just the work has been done because you handed over a good, you got back a good which was made out of the kind of good which you handed over. There was no difference uh, and nobody cared if you got back this specific sack of corn which you handed over or not. Uh, so 310 clarifies that if the two sacks of grain have been mixed up or if that's even usually done that in that case nevertheless you get back what you handed over and only work has been done only a pr the processing counts if the parties evidently meant the transaction this way uh, by the way, the whole problem, uh, is it barter trade or not, uh, might also apply in, in different constellations. So when I prepared these slides, I came to a nice idea. For example, you hand over, um, you have a neighbor knocking on your door and you know these neighbors, can I borrow some sugar from you? And now you say, yeah, naturally, I lend you a kilogram of sugar so that you can bake a cake and you promise to get to bring it back next day. Okay. Um, now, the trick is naturally, if the neighbor is not completely mad, 
he will use up your kilogram of sugar and will give you back next day a different kilogram of sugar. <laughs> and now you see the underlying problem. So um, is that now borrowing a kilogram of sugar to a neighbor and you get back a kilogram of sugar or is it barter trade? You deliver a kilogram of sugar to a neighbor and the neighbor pays by selling you the next day a different kilogram of sugar. So, uh, so in, in real life, okay, you can be fortunate that you are not an entrepreneur and your neighbor is not. Huh? Uh, however, here you see a basic problem and that's exactly the problem underlying 310. Um, that if you borrow or hand over something to somebody else and you get back the exact kind of thing in the exact same quantity, is that then a borrowing transaction or is it sale and resale? Um, and that makes it probably understandable why Section 310 of the German USDG has been necessary just to clarify a uh, don't run completely mad. There are formalities and there's relays. Um, yeah, now you know, we should always have also a look on EU law. You have seen in German law 3.4 and also 3.10 exist. Um, the rule in 3.4, which rule in EU law does it reflect? And the answer is, we have already said that 3.4 is basically superfluous and just confirms what follows from a close reading of 3.1. And therefore, it should not be surprising that there is no corresponding rule in EU law at all. EU law just has the basic definitions of what is a delivery and what is a service in articles 14 and 25. Um, so they thought they don't need it. And um, naturally, that is also decisive for the interpretation of German legislation, because you know when the interpretation of German law seems to be doubtful, we have to interpret the law. Um, interpreting high means you have to find out what the legislator wanted to say and the legislator wanted to follow the orders of the EU law so we have to ask the European Code of Justice for what does the VAT directive want to say because we wanted to say the same by definition and so um, whenever it goes into deep details or questionable details you will look to the jurisdiction of the ECJ and the ECJ says, well, the line between delivery and service, um, that depends on which elements are important for the transaction. And that leads in principle to the same results. Because also we said in advance, if you have just an ancillary element, which is a tangible object, then it doesn't count. However, if it counts, if it is important, then naturally it will be decisive to, um, to find out or to classify the transaction as a delivery. Okay, that was uh, my thoughts on this specific problem. So keep in mind, whenever somebody speaks to you about that, you basically already knew all that, so you can relax a bit, so nothing overwhelmingly new today and that's also from time to time nice so relax a bit and i would like to see you again soon on the channel we have still some other specific topics to debate and uh, until then enjoy the time and till next time goodbye